All right, everybody, welcome to another episode of West Coast Street Knowledge. I'm your host, Gil, a.k.a. the American Cholo. And today I have another special guest in the house for you. I've got a ex-gang member that turned his life completely around and now is a filmmaker out here in Los Angeles, um, Mr. Manny Jimenez Sr. How you doing, brother? Pretty good, pretty good. How are you, How are you man? I'm good, man. I, I, first of all, I appreciate you coming on the podcast and um, sharing your story, Manny. Uh, thanks for having me. I've been following you guys for I try to catch um, as many as I can and love what you're doing and um, it's going to grow from here. So you know, I'm happy to be part of it. That's right, brother. Appreciate it. So let's just, let's just jump right into this, man. Um, people for people who don't know you and don't know your story, uh, where did you grow up at? Uh, well, I'm born and raised in the Los Angeles area. Okay. So I'll, yeah, I'll just leave it at that. Goal, situation, Chicano family, you know, dad on drugs. On heroin, beat my mom, all that stuff, and um, see all that as a kid. Right. And um, got into, I think my escape was looking back. A lot of stuff you kind of, when you reflect, you kind of, you know, you kind of can see, like, oh, okay, you know, like, so television, looking back, I started saying, oh, television and movies was a, an escape right. uh, for me as a young boy with all this stuff. So that was kind of cool. But you, you, you as a, you as a kid, just to kind of run right through it real quick, you, you were involved in gangs for a bit. Obviously, the parenting wasn't, wasn't like as you said, you had, you had parents who were going through drug problems and issues like that, and that, that definitely affected you up to what age did you kind of start phasing out of that? Uh, phasing out of my innocence or phasing out of the gang stuff? Out of the gang stuff. Oh, uh, yeah, after. Yeah, after being in the gangster for a while, I mean, you know, being angry and hurt and all that, and then, you know, as I started getting out, I mean, pretty much a good, I was in my late 20s, I, I, I put it this way, the first few years I got in, right. and then when people, would like my first, I, I like to say like the guy that would have became my best friend, right. When he died and he was shot in the eye, which is one of my films is about, is when I seen like, okay, dang, like. This is what I signed up for. Like, you know, when you're signing up for this stuff, it's more like the girls, the parties, right, the fun. Right, right, right. So then right. it started getting real, but you're like a young kid, so you, you don't know how to, like, you know, your, your pride and your, your ego and all that, you're, and then you're, you're scared, right? So you're like, well, I'm, this is what I signed up for, so I'm committed now. Right. And then you see more of that happen. So as the later years, I've seen a lot of the betrayal. You know, I had already, like, seen a lot of the betrayal. Right. And, um, but the later years, I was kind of like, man, this is getting, this is played out already for me. And so I was in my late twenties and then, uh, I got a busted for a crime I didn't do. And uh, luckily I had this mentor, I had this, this, uh, this lady, um, Shirley McDonald Waters. She was, a an attorney out of Orange County and she would mentor me before I got, before I got in cases and tell me that. I believe in you, you could do more in your life. And she would always tell me all this positive stuff. And at that time, this was in the 90s, I was like, man, I'm going to be in America's most wanted. You know, like, I don't want to hear all that stuff. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Um, so, but so when I got, so I was getting, you know, I got arrested for a crime um, that I didn't do. And, you know, you don't snitch, whatever. It is what it is. Just fight it. And this lawyer, I called the lawyer, like, hey, remember you said you believe in me? I need help, you know? And she helped me, and um, you know the guy was a was another from another gang testifying, and you know he changed his testimony on the stand, and um, said I realized I made a mistake and all that. And the lawyer um, going in there with the lawyer, you know, it always helps, right? Of course. And um, they stop, you know, they dismissed the case, and the judge's um, were exact words, right, Mister Jimenez? Um, I, I have a hunch you were there but I can't hold you on my hunch, you know, and he dismissed the case. Right. So that pretty much, but when they dismissed the case, at this point, I'm, um, I have two daughters, my new girlfriend, who's now my wife was pregnant with our, with my son, right. with our son. And he, she's like four months pregnant and the courtroom, there's like no home. He's there. Nobody there. It was just my mom, rest in peace. My grandma, rest in peace. And then my brother, Right, and then my girl, who was like said four months pregnant. So at that point, I'm just like, okay, now I had a rat. Um, I fought the case legit. Got a lawyer, beat the case, or you know, I got dismissed. Right. It's like, what do I do? Like, I have to be like 
pretty dumb to just like keep it going, right? <laughs> so I was just like, this opportunity for me to just make a, a left turn here. And then um, everything that I learned in the neighborhood, which was commitment, loyalty, you know, all that stuff, even though not, I, like in other words, I cherry picked good things from the neighborhood that, that I took into my new life, right? That's right. So then I applied it into my new journey, right? So like now, okay, let me be committed to my my wife now let me be committed to my family let me be loyal to them you know let me let me put everything that i uh, was putting into the neighborhood put it now into my family and to like rebuilding my life on uh, into society right so you know i didn't have a at that point so like what was like 27 28 this is in 1997 so i'm like i didn't have a driver's license no you know no car no bank account um you know, like, you know, I'm Mexican, I'm short, I'm a cholo, you know what I'm saying? Like, so I was like, dang, what the heck am I, who's going to hire me? Right. I was very low comp, uh, low self-esteem as far as, like, um, edu- you know, I was a high school dropout, you know, I mean, so it was, I just was like, man, I have everything against me, you know, but I just knew for sure, like, I'm not going to commit crime. That's right. Because, um, you know, I, man, I like my freedom, bro. Yeah, of course, <laughs> you know of I course. Just, I like going in the, you know, it was always like the little things. I like to be able to go in the fridge and eat, eat a bowl of cereal in the middle of the night if I want to. You know, not, as I'm older, I don't do that any that much. Right. Once in a while, but can't do that a lot. You know, start having health problems. But I mean, you know, those little things, taking a shower, using your own restroom in your home, and just certain little things. I just was like, man, I'm not trying to, you know, hitting the county a bunch of times and juvie and all that. I was like, I'm cool. You know, I just really love my freedom. And then there was like the adrenaline, you know, I never got into like the whole drug thing. But for me, it was like brotherhood, the camaraderie, fun times, and the adrenaline of the life is something that, you know, kind of got, was my thing, you know. So again, I took that, applied it into to my commitment to my change. And as I was transitioning, you know, so now again, I'm like, I have nothing. My girl's four months pregnant, like, what am I going to do with my life, Right. Right. Kept trying to get a job. Nobody would hire me. Um, she would have to drive me with her mom's car, and it was just—it was, you know, rejection, rejection, rejection. And so I—I I didn't even like. But that didn't, you know, once it, once you like the main thing for me is like I was committed, right? Once the thing of once I'm committed, or anybody is, excuse me, you just you know you just go full force without like there's like not stopping is not an option you know what i mean there's no giving up is not an option like that's not even never been in my head it's like no i'm gonna do this so finally someone hired um my girl and i we both applied at toys r us and they actually didn't hire me they hired her at first okay so i was like bummer man i can't even get a job at toys r us and then like a couple weeks later they hired me and then she ended up quitting because i mean you know we needed the money right right and um so I get a job at Toys R Us. I'm trying to, you know, just do the right thing or whatever. Um, and, you know, like, I had to learn how to, like, be cool and know how to talk to people and, you know, help parents find their kids. You know, sometimes these kids would be lost on different aisles or whatever. But I had to be, you know, I learned to be, like, the best Toys R Us worker there was and do everything that um, I needed to do and end up getting, like, uh, uh, what do you call it, uh, certificates employee of the month and all that right, and raises right. and and i started feeling good about myself and then there was this one guy that i helped this one man he came in um on his lunch break and i was almost ready to leave so you know like when you're ready to leave you just kind of pretend to work you know <laughs> and you're just kind of moving toys <laughs> you're, or moving you're coasting you're coasting right okay? like if you're at, like the people at walmart when i see them like i know what you're doing like trying to look busy <laughs> So I, yeah, so I'm doing that, and so I was like, the guy comes in, hey, you know, I need to, I need to buy this, this. Uh, he, he's like, I already knew all the aisles where, where you know, the Hot Wheels were, the Barbie. I knew all the aisles. I just really got, I was trying to be good at my job. And um, so the guy comes in, I need this one specific toy, and I was kind of annoyed because I was like, man, I'm about to leave right now, right? right? But I'm like, yeah, yeah, I know where it's at, and I took him, and he was on his lunch break, and then um, he was very happy that I just was able to get him in and out. But inside, I was annoyed, right? Right. But I put up the front, I guess. So, so he left. So the next day, they called me in the office on the speaker, like, "Oh, you know, Jimenez, come to the, come to the um, office." And when they call you on the speaker, everybody's like, "Ooh, you're in trouble," or whatever, right? <laughs> yeah. So I went in there. I'm like, "Oh man, what did I do?" And I was always like, 
scared that they were going to find out that you know I had a pass and I had a, I was on probation, all this stuff. So right. they were going to fire me. So I was always, and I never told them that, right? Hmm. And then so I go in there, and the guy, the, the owner's house or the, the the store director says, "Hey, do you remember this guy came in yesterday, and he and you helped him, and you know, and I knew who they were talking about, and I just said, no, nah, I don't remember." So I thought the guy complained about me, right? right. Like I said, I was feeling kind of not in a good mood, right? right? I was right. really annoyed. And he goes, I goes, no, nah, you don't remember you came in? I'm like, no, I don't remember. I don't remember. But I, I knew. I remember, though, right? And he <laughs> yeah, says, yeah. Oh, well, look, at, he said this. And he shows me the paper that the guy called up and said all this and nice things about him. That was the best customer service he ever got and this and that. And I was like, oh, he was like, oh, man. I started laughing. I go, yeah, I remember him. <laughs> and they started laughing. So, but what that did for me, the reason I tell that story, what that did for me was like, I was like, oh, man, wow, that, that made me, um, that really moved me and touched me. And I always remember to this day because, and I still have the little write-up in my in my stuff, you know, and, and he says, uh, the reason why it touched me because every time, you know, growing up, we're told everything we do bad, right? Absolutely. Like, I've never, I don't remember any time, um, even gets emotional thinking about it now. Like, I never remember ever as a kid anybody saying good job or you're going to be something in life or, you know, I, I never in my whole life. So, so that felt really good, man. And that was a big, um, man, that feeling. I was like, I just never had that feeling before. So that really, I was like, oh, man, that's pretty cool. You know, someone acknowledged that I did something good, you know. And um, and even though I kind of was annoyed, so I, I kept doing that. But I was like, man, I'm, you know, I'm already on my third kid. I'm working here with people that have, you know, this is their side job. They're going to college or right. going to school. And I'm just like, this is my only job. And I'm. And every paycheck, I was buying Hot Wheels and stuff, you know, <laughs> uh, toys that I didn't never got as a kid or whatever, right? right? right. Like Batman stuff. So, so I was like, man, what am I gonna do with my life? So I thought of the military, and I was like, nah, I don't like waking up early. Right. <laughs> I thought of going back to school, like, nah, I never did good in school. I, I get, um, you know, ADHD. You know what I mean? I just can't concentrate and all that. And then, um, and then I was like, man, I always liked working in the movies. You know what I mean? And, and like I said, at movies, even even uh, as a kid, even through the whole neighborhood stuff, movies was always like a, an escape, right? Right. And um, so I was something I really like, just like a uh, little fire on me, you know, like, man, the light bulb would always go on. So I would watch, um, the way my schedule was, I would get off late and my girl picked me up and I would watch Jay Leno back in the days, the, the Tonight Show, which Jimmy, for younger folks, you know, that's the Jimmy Fallon one, right? Right, but right. Back then it was Jay Leno, right? And this is Johnny Carson before that. Yeah, yeah, Johnny Carson before <laughs> yeah, that, yeah, yeah, yeah. no, for sure. And uh, so he was doing these interviews, you know, he interviewed the three interviews that stuck out to me were like this one with Will Smith, that he said about his dad, they built a, a brick house, a brick wall in front of their uh, warehouse, um, excuse me, in front of their, um, I guess they had a, 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 not a warehouse, what do you call it? I don't know, they sell tools. I can't it's like a storage, like a storage shack or something? No, was, uh, they had a store, you know, I'm like a, I can't think of it. They had a store where they sold tools and stuff. Okay. But anyways, they they, they had their own business and they were putting up a brick wall and his da- and the son and Will said no. Young Will said no. I, I we can't do that. And he said no. And they just did one brick at a time. So I knew when the brick wall was done, uh, he said, "Hey, look at son. Don't ever say you can't." And I was like, "Oh, well, that's pretty cool." You know, I was like, like I said, I never had people tell me that. So right. Hearing it from them was cool. And then. Robert Duvall said that he had a great job at the at the post office, had benefits, retirement, all that. He's a, but it just wasn't something that he wanted to do. So it was like these things were speaking to me, like, damn, that's kind of how I feel, right? That's right. So I was like, I want to go to Hollywood, but like same thing, like, oh man, I got a criminal record. Um, you know that 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 insecurity kept creeping up, right? Like, right, right. Again, I'm cholo, I'm short, I'm Mexican, like, right. you know, all this stuff. And now it just kind of lingered on me. I don't know why, it just did, you know. And then um, finally I watched this one about Quentin Tarantino promoting Jackie Brown. And um, he was already like, he was like just saying about how you could come from Russia, you could come from anywhere, and Hollywood doesn't care, right? Right. Hollywood doesn't care where you come from. I'm like, man, I've just got to do it. That's right. So I just told my girl, again, I was like, she's like six months now, right? She's getting bigger and bigger. <laughs> I was like... Hey, you gotta take me to Hollywood, <laughs> drive me around. <laughs> it's like what the heck? Yeah, like, cause you know, I remember right. And again, this goes back to my mom. Rest in peace. She loved movie business. She loved um, helping people. 
she loved um she always taught me about using my um my instincts right my good instincts as a, as a young kid like those are the things that she did that i didn't like but those are the things that i took from her right. so when we were young i even found an old vhs tape of her, her, her um someone recording her or no her recording all la back in those days back in the 90s right. and then her singing seeing a movie studio suit uh you know when you see the big trucks out there and yeah. they're filming yes of course and hearing my mom's excitement of seeing the trucks, oh, look, they're filming a movie. <laughs> and then it, so, like, I got, I always, that's how I get it. To this day, I still get like that. Like, right now, there's hardly any movies filming. But, right. Uh, so, I, so, I would see that and get excited. So, I told my girl, hey, look, you got to take me to Hollywood in downtown L.A. You know, there's no internet, or I didn't know how to use it back then, but we got to go find some movie sets. And my whole plan was, like, I'm just going to walk on movie sets <laughs> until they hire me. <laughs> That's it. Okay. You know, so I would. That was the plan, man. So she would. I said, you know, sometimes they'll be in the middle of the night. <laughs> it's like scary for you. Know? I was like, so drop me off, go around the block, and keep going around the block till, till you come back up. Till they come back up. Right. So it was almost like we were doing missions. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> so I jump out, go in there, rejection, rejection, and like people were just like carrying lights. They're like, nah, get out of here. What, 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 hire you. what were you telling these people when you're walking up on them? Hey, I want to get in the movie business. Hey, how can I break <laughs> in? You know? Okay. And a lot of times. You just get rejected, you know, it's just, you know, like I said, I was this little young gangbanger kid, big old Ben Davis, and you know what I'm saying, like, you know, so they're just like, they didn't take me serious, and then finally, but I just, but, but that didn't, that didn't phase me at all, like, I wasn't like, oh, okay, I'm gonna go home and not try, no, I'm like, oh, just do it again, do it again, so every time we had a chance to use her mom's car, we, you know, we had a time when we could use her mom's car, and when I was in, at Toys R Us, you know? Right, right. So finally, uh, this was like months of doing that, and then finally I went to one, and I, I don't know what happened, but I got all the way on the movie set, and it was, looked like they were breaking for lunch, so I got to see like the big old buffet, so I was like, damn, man, I, need, I really got to get up in here. <laughs> right. And then they were like, the guy was actually pretty cool, he goes, no, go go get hired for, because I look, man, I'll sweep, I'll do security, I'll, go, I'll work for free, just, I just want to get in the business. That's right. And then the guy says, like, no, just come get paid and do it right, but we don't need anybody. And I was like, man, so I just walked back out, and I was just waiting for my, my girl to come up. And there was, a, there was a, a white dude with dreadlocks smoking a cigarette. And I said, um, hey, man, how do, you, how do you get in the movie business, dude? And he's like, man, I don't know, man. I'm just an extra. I'm like, Shh, man, well, I'll be an extra. How do you be an extra? So he gave me a number to Central Casting. And I was like, cool. And I called it. He's like, it's legit, man. You pay it. Back then, it was called Cen- uh, Cenex Casting. Okay. And uh, it's one of the biggest uh, background casting places around in Burbank. And, um, you know, so back then, it was mostly phone. You call. So I called. It was the middle of the night. I called. I said, and they said, you know, Cen- uh, Cenex Casting. And I said, and I hung up because I got nervous. I'm like, oh, man, it's legit. And I called back. I'm like, hey, I want to be an extra. And they're like, are you union or non-union? I said, oh, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I said, oh yeah, you're non-union. So I signed up, I, I, and I, you know, I went over there, and I went over there and signed up, and I'm trying to dress like um, I'm going to a job interview, right? right? With, like dockers and a shirt, a collared shirt tucked in, you know, like you're going to court or whatever. You're going to court, yeah, that's exactly what I was gonna say. <laughs> yeah, and um, and next thing you know, like, so they 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 got me on a job. It's called Deep Impact. It's a big old crowd scene, but I just remember it was at Universal Studios backlots. And I went, and I'm like, oh, I saw the buffet, you know, the free food. And, right, right. And I was like, you don't got to, they're like, you don't got to pay, man. That's all for you. I'm like, oh, man, this is calm. Like, I'm gonna, when I got on set, bro, I was like, I'm going to do this forever. Yeah, that's right. This is it. Nope. I just loved it. I just fell in love with it. And I just started studying, like, all what ha- goes down on the, behind the scenes of the set. And then my allergies kicked, and I had a, physically had a bad time on set because we were on this big old grass, and, you know, but... It was the best, one of the best times of my life. Too, now, though. what year was this? That was that was like now you know my um, ninety seven. So that was ninety eight. Oh wow! So okay. from ninety, yeah, it was within the year. I was like, I was. Uh, you guess you could say making moves. <laughs> right, <laughs> making the big moves. I had moves. wasted enough time already. You know what I mean? That's right. So so now you you, you go on the set. You got hired as an extra. Where do you start uh, progressing in this thing? So now, I start studying. You know, what, what, so like early on, I started studying. Also, again, I, I go back to this. I go back to like things that I cherry picked from the neighborhood, right? right? 
when you get in the neighborhood, what do you got to do? You got to put in work, make a name for yourself, Absolutely. right? Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay, so boom, that's it. I flipped the script, got in Hollywood, put in work, make a name for myself, right? Nice. I wasn't tripping on the money. I was like, no, nah, I'm going to put in work. I'm going to do a good job and be nice to people and just, you know, but I still, you know, you know how it is. I still had a, you know, someone disrespect you. I still had that edge, you know what I mean? Yeah, like, of you, course. You're going to disrespect me, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yes, yes. So there's a, I mean, in any business, there's just rude people in, yes, in the world. Yes, yes, yes. It's just the way it is, you know, you, you know, so, um, but I, um, so I started getting to a point where like showing up and then, um, I got on the show, the Showtime show called, um, and I can't even think of the name of the show right now. I'll have to look it up, but it was oh, Resurrection Boulevard. Okay. Yeah. Back in the day. So I got on that show and then they, you know, they, they, they needed, um, I seen that they had lowrider cars and homies. So I started telling the casting company and the people on set, like, hey, I could get, you know, I knew some lowrider car club and I, I know some other homies. And I met other other homies, this guy named Alex. He actually just uh, DM'd me like a few days ago. These were like one of the first homies I met um, from the San Fernando area, um, Proclaim area. Nice. And he was like, hey, remember me? I'm proud of you, brother. And, he had got out of the business years later, but he was like the first dude that I met that was like showed me the ropes, you know. Right. And um, so, so my whole thing was like, I would tell the casting companies or the or be on set, and um, hey man, I could get low rider cars or I could get this. And a lot of times I got taken advantage of, and they got me, yeah, you know, real cheap. Of course. But I, I I didn't care about that. I was like, I just want to learn. I want to, like I said, make that reputation that I'm the guy that I could deliver, you know. But I was doing it just like I already knew the game. Like you bring something to the table, you know. What I mean, that's what it's all about. So I was just started doing that, and 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 um, that was kind of like my filmmaking school. The whole neighborhood stuff. A lot of it, you know. I'll touch back on it, but a lot of it was going back to your instincts. The whole thing was, you know, really preparing me to be a filmmaker. But um, you know, I started just, uh, you know, hey, look, man, I could provide something to. To the people in Hollywood, right. being used to them, and I'm getting homeboys work. Right, like, exactly. It's a blessing on both sides, you know what I mean? Yes, sir, yes, sir. And I'm the guy in the middle, so I want to make sure both people are happy. So that was like, started going good, started going good. Uh, worked on some Cypress Hill videos. I, I, you know, I was a big Cypress Hill fan, still am. That's from right. Back in the day, so I was like, cool, got to, got to meet those guys and be on their videos. Then got to meet Danny Trejo and... You know, and and, and Pete Bosque, a lot of these guys that I, that I um, looked at uh, watching TV, you know, ditching parties or, you know, all the, <laughs> you know, blood and blood out and colors and all that. So I started meeting all these guys and then, you know, and it was pretty cool. And then, um, but providing, providing something and really um, helping people, it just became my thing. And I became the guy that, that, you know, I made a reputation by that and they started hire me more and more and I worked on um, a bunch of TV shows and movies uh, but Resurrection Boulevard was one of the first ones and it met Noel G along the way when he was starting his career we were we became friends and um, so it was like a little group of us that are just started hanging out and looking out for each other you know right and um, it was it was you know, yeah it was fun times and we were going to music videos uh, commercials we were just doing a lot of a lot of cool stuff um, and we weren't really worried about like, um, you know, it was never, it was never an issue where like, where somebody was from, like if you ran into on set, like if we're on set filming, of course. And some homie locked up, they were just like, homie, how can I be down with you guys? Man? Right. How could you get, yeah, oh, let's go right. get yeah. some work. Like we just got to be committed. I just would share what I'm sharing now. Hey man, you just got to be committed and be cool. Be nice. Show up on time. You know, and like I said, there was times on set where like, a wardrobe person or or a, you know one guy specifically was very rude this big italian dude right. and i remember i went up to my fool it was like the first year i was really really wrong I'm like, I'll break your legs fool. you know <laughs> talking to me like that and right, like, right. And, he, and he looked at me and he had watery eyes he goes hey man i'm really sorry he said um i've been a shithead all morning my brother-in-law just died and then oh. i said oh man i felt bad right, right, right. um and then i just noticed like People are either going to, if you confront them, they're either going to call security <laughs> or they're going to apologize. Right. You know what I mean? And um, it was just, you know, developing myself. I had mentors. I stayed in touch with my lawyer mentor. I had other mentors. 
I had to start learning how to correct people respectfully, correct. not not get gangster on them, right? Yes, yes, In case yes. People don't talk to me like that, because sometimes it's not personal. They just the, the production is moving so fast. You're trying to get a shot with the right. when the sun comes down, and people are are using deep voices, or they're they it comes off like they're talking down or you're yelling. You know, but they're not. And a lot of times they'll come like, hey, sorry, guys, you know, we're just trying to get this shot or whatever. Right. So I started learning, like, okay, look, if I confront everybody that talks crazy to me on set, like, I'm going to end up getting, you know, blacklisted and getting busted. Yes, sir. You know, back where I'm starting. So I kind of had to develop, you know, just, just how to, uh, um, communication skills and, um, and, um, you know, just how to, um, what is it called, uh, uh, it's kind of like crisis it's, it's, intervention it's, it's, a little bit. It's kind of yeah, exactly, exactly. It's kind of it's also kind of like swallowing your pride, knowing that hey, I, it's not like the streets. I can beat this guy up, and everything will be better. It'll, it's gonna get worse. Exactly, Just, and, and it's like, man, I want to do this the rest of my life, you know. So, and I and then I studied early on. Is like, where does the movie start, right? Because I kind of didn't know. Like everybody wants to be an actor when you think Hollywood. Of course. Right? Like I watched, I grew up watching, you know, my favorite movies were, you know, uh, Outsiders, Back to the Future. I even liked Grease, you know. That's right. Um, uh, what other movies? Uh, you know, just, the Bronx Tale is like my favorite, but you think of actors, you know what I mean? Yes. And and so I, I you know, I really didn't set out to, well, I want to be an actor. I just was like, I want to be in the movie business, but I started doing some stunts. I did acting, but I really started studying, like, well, how does the movie get made? And then it starts with the script. Okay. Right? So I bought this the screenwriting book by Sid Fields, uh, and, and I put it in my backpack, and I read, like, a few chapters. I just couldn't focus on reading books. Right. I, I'm still pretty bad at it to this day, to be honest. I, I, I learned more of watching YouTube videos, <laughs> you know, um, or the audio stuff, you yeah, know? Yeah, of course. But, um, so, so the, yeah, so my concentration was pretty bad, but as I call it, it all starts, it doesn't start with the director, it doesn't start, with the, it starts with the script. So I'm like, all right, so I made a decision back then, I'm going to write a script one day. But then it goes, then it goes back to, oh, I don't know, I dropped out of high school, my grammar's bad, I can't spell. And, and so then that whole thing took me down, you know what I mean? Start, they, you, or helped me back, that whole thinking helped me back for many, many years. You start doubting you know, yourself. I say that again. I say you started doubting yourself again. Oh uh, yeah, big time, big time. So, so, so then that kind of like, let me just keep doing what I'm doing, you know, making contacts. So I was making contacts, and then we went snuck into the Oscars. Me and um, Noel G and a few other guys <laughs> snuck in the Oscars, snuck in the SAG Awards, and um, um, and a funny story when one time <laughs> we we made fake badges. Oh, oh man, we made fake badges, and um, I remember Noel. He didn't have a uh, he didn't have um dress pants so he wore but I, I gave him some black dickies and, and, a, and a, an extra I think an extra coat we borrowed from somebody like a blazer uh, and um I threw on a suit and we, we put on these fake badges so like at the Oscars this is when it was over there by at um by UCLA right right or excuse me USC at the um oh, I forgot the name of the theater it used to be at but it's right there by uh by USC and so we, there's like cops first and then there's there's, there's, there's a security so we went by the cops and the, me, Noel, and this other guy, and we're walking, and then the cops are right there, like, oh, man, we're either going to get busted or we're going to get through, get through. And they looked at our passes, and they're all fake. And then he's like, all right, go ahead. Oh, I'm like, oh, snaps, man. They're, they're straight up LAPD, like, let's yes, walk right through. <laughs> so now we're on the, and we did it twice. The second year, the second time we got busted. Oh, <laughs> I'm talking yeah. about. But we're on, we're on, now we're on the red carpet, right? I'm the like, on it. So on the red carpet, we're like right before everybody's gonna walk in, and um, you know, and, and we got a oh, and we got a scanner, a walkie-talkie, not a scanner, a walkie-talkie, uh-huh. right? We're on their channel and everything to hear everybody talking. So we're suited up. So look, let me back up. Before that, like about a few weeks before that, we're on set uh, playing gangbangers on some TV show, and the production would sometimes hire, you know, the way they hired us, like some real homies to play gangbangers, they yeah. would hire, sometimes hire real cops when they're off duty to play um, background in the, uh, you know, on TV shows, right. right? So they had hired these real cops on set, so these real LAPD guys, and, you know, we would even clown them, like, dang, man, you're getting a little too rough here, man, just a TV show, you know? <laughs> yeah, but they were yeah. cool, they were on set, we're on, when we were on set, everybody was just... We're all the background. Nobody yeah. was above nobody. That's right. You know what I mean? And they were they were cool and they didn't trip on us. They weren't asking us where we're from or we have any warrants. None of that. So we're just like eating good free food. Bunch of homies from different neighborhoods. 
it was like man it was it was, it was it was really a really fun time and it still is nice. so those same cops so now we're back to we're on the red carpet of the oscars right right i think it's the i think it's the, the i want to say the shrine auditorium the, the, yeah the shrine i believe you're right is that yeah right yeah That's yeah what, before they moved to hollywood so on the red carpet we see the same lapd <laughs> cops all suited up doing, doing private security <laughs> at the oscars right so we're like, oh my god, oh my, oh dude, there's those cops, there's those cops, you know, they're walking over. Yeah, yeah. So we're like, we're busted, dude, we're busted, you're gonna bust us, you know. And they're like, hey, what's up, guys? And like, oh, you guys got some connections, huh? We just uh, all like, oh yeah, you know, you know. <laughs> <laughs> and they shook her hand and they're like, all right, cool, cool, man, good for you guys, because they remembered us from yeah, the set, you yeah, know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So they didn't know if we were there with, uh, with fake passes. <laughs> it was the funniest time because I remember, like, man, I'm getting ready to phone out, right? Ah, oh, shit. Good one. <laughs> Start jumping fences. It's going to be all in the Right, the right, news, right. You know? So well, they were like, cool. Then, you know, we, so we were here with our little radio. We were just waiting for someone to like, get those three Mexicans. Right, right, right. <laughs> <laughs> so we just got in there we, we sat in there got to the after party met all kinds of different folks and you know we're, and I think the reason I say all that we were like trying to network and do all this thing but there was really nothing to network like we met this person met that person and you know uh, we seen Steven Spielberg one time we're like hey Steven and he's like oh get, he put his hand up he goes I'll be right back and we actually waited for him <laughs> yeah yeah I don't think he was gonna come back either <laughs> we go look to the part of the tent where he walked through and he was the streets <laughs> oh shit oh shit so it was just funny stuff. We met Gary Coleman. Um, I mean, just a lot of people, man. That it was like cool. We grew up watching them on TV, you know. But um, so next year we got caught and they let us go, man. They're like, you know, they 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 they're like scan your pass. This time they were scanning passes, uh, <laughs> and I was like, oh man, I go, oh, I'm good, man. I go, nope, come here. <laughs> technology, they, technology they got, got you. But they let us go, and it was cool. We're just like, nah, we're just trying to have fun. We ain't trying to hurt nobody. Because there was, like, drunk paparazzi people, you know? Right. So they were more focused on them. So, but, um, yeah, I was, go ahead. I was going to ask you. So while, while you're, while you're uh, in the industry right now, you're, you're, this, you're still fairly new in there. Did you ever see any homies that uh, they just couldn't handle it? Like when some of these guys were talking to them a certain way, and they just kind of snap on the, I don't know if it's the producer, director that's in the film? Uh, well, as far as me... Personally, I was kind of like the, the liaison. I was like the representative, you know, right. so I got into, I, I heard of one fight where a, a, an actor got, um, there was a little fight on set that had to do with two guys that I um, was representing. Right. I wasn't personally on set, but, um, you know, and then I, I had to have, like, one was like, one was an OG dude, and I had to talk to him, you know, he's a straight up, been in prison, all that, and he apologized to me, you know, he was going cool. like, oh, homie, like, I messed up, and this and that, because right. uh, another, uh, there was this, like, this white buff guy playing a cop that took his thing, he, you know, he did some method Robert De Niro acting, and slapped one of the actors, and that dude got mad, <laughs> oh, <shit. laughs> he was playing a CO, and he slapped the actor, and they're playing inmates, and those two, two dudes, you know, they start fighting the guy, <laughs> well, this is what it makes so, do, fuck, <laughs> yeah, so that was the only time that I've heard of that, and they both apologized, and like, I was like, you know, and he slapped me, I'm like, man, you're an actor, fool, <laughs> But um, as far as me, I mean, no, the homies, you know, here, here's where it kind of started going sideways. We worked on so many movies and TV shows. I, I uh, One of the biggest uh, prog- uh, projects I worked on was Training Day, you know? Oh, wow, okay. And um, I, so I went from being a manager and doing casting, I did locations, to started doing consulting. So it asked me to make help them make it authentic or yeah, whatever, right? of course, right? of course. So I worked with this um, actor named Cliff Curtis, who played like the OG on Training Day. And um, we worked with that dude all night, man. He really, he really, you know, had fake tattoos. We worked with this uh, great uh, Chicano tattoo uh, makeup artist named um, Ken Diaz. He did makeup on, um, you know, uh, he did Joe Pesci's makeup on, um, what's that, um, Casino. Okay. He took his feet up in the, in the hole and all that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like a lot of big movies. So, you know, uh, we became really good friends. Um, he did. He did. He does. He, he helps put all the uh, fake tattoos on actors and make them look really authentic, right, right? Right. As far as the skin tone, color, and making sure they, you know, you know, most Chicano homies don't have color on their color yeah, tattoos. Yeah. Right. You know? Right. Right. The black and white, and then we helped like make his hair. Um, you know, he's he's a veteran, so like you know, you don't have to go bald. We just gotta cut it and 
do the palm cone thing and wear a beanie and all that. So we, you know, and he and he did pretty darn good in my opinion because he's from New Zealand. That's the that's the guy who's in the the, the famous uh, bathtub scene, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, he sold it. He sold it, brother. Yeah, so 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 we got to start doing that, and then um, as I'm reading those, those scripts, I'm like, oh, I can write a script, you know. And I was getting that, get a little bit more confident because I'm helping them go over their script, okay, and um, bringing home it. So then, you know, so as all that's going go, and then there was a casting director, Dee Dee Rickens, who who I worked with on training. That she was like the only, she was want to say the only one, but one of the main ones, who like I would help, like pretty much a lot of them, would just kept taking advantage. And so then I I started getting hip to it. So I started charging him, right? Yeah, of course. But she was she was the only one that said um, I helped her do a lot of stuff, doing all these open casting for training day. Like we would go to this neighborhood, that neighborhood, and you know she had called me. Hey, you want to? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then one day she calls me in her office and she gives me a stack of blank time cards, and she goes, "Here, fill out fill out all these time cards for all those days." You know, I'm like, "Oh, sweet," you know. And then she's the one that got me the consulting job. That's right. She goes, "I put a word in with the producers," you know. And I was like, "Oh man, that was cool." So. Again, just doing good work, you know, it, came, it really came back to help me, you know. That's right. And in a way, with just doing it and not being a jerk. And I'm, hey, how much are you going to pay me and all that, you know. Uh, so, uh, but then, you know, you start, as they started getting into that, the homies, you know, say, first it starts with, like, homies not showing up, right, right or not, right. Or, or then being late. Um, and then it starts with, um, you know, homeboys being a little too perverted or being perverted <laughs> there's no too, too right, perverted right. period to females on set yeah yeah I can't or the that. makeup girls or the wardrobe lady you know um stealing clothes from the set oh yeah um you know yeah, i'm a real gangster you know want to bring your guns to sell like no we're just dude it's not about that you know so a few individuals very you know that wasn't a lot but it was some but i but i but you know then it went back to like the hood training, right? Like, right. I knew how to handle it. You know what I mean? It wasn't right. like, oh my God, call security to talk to this guy. Right, <laughs> right, like, right. And there was dudes that were straight bigger than, I, you know, dude, I'm five, three and a half, you know, so <laughs> pretty much everybody that I was dealing with was, was taller than me. Right. But I mean, I'm dealing with some, some dudes straight up big pinta fools, you know what I right, mean? Right, of course. Some buffed out, big old brochas, or it could be some youngsters, you know, it's all different, but, you know, they all wanted to work, so I was like the guy that could get them work, and I never... And I never, you know, um, flexed on that. I never, I never, you know what I mean? I never, yes, like, yes. Oh, you better be cool with me. You better kiss my butt. Like, I was never about that. I was like, hey, let's get the homeless work. The That's door's right. open. Boom, That's boom, right. boom. It, like, I was just like, always, always, always. And then it goes back to, like, my mom, you know, how, always helping people, you know what I mean? giving people rides, lending money, letting people crash at the pad all the time, you know what I mean? Wow, yeah, that's right. I'm like, Mom, what are you doing? <laughs> but, like, that's what it was, you know, helping helping homies, you know? Um, so, um, so you know, but then I had to, you know, there's times I had to have a talk with some of these dudes, and some of them, the ones that the ones that grew, that, were, that were pretty much the ones that uh, manned up and say, hey, man, my bad, you know what I mean? And, and, you know, this ain't for me? Cool, we're good. Yeah, of course. Or, Hey man, I'm sorry. Give me another chance. All right, cool. And then the one that gave me attitude, you know, that that were like, "Hey, homie, you, you, you know, like, then yeah, yeah, I just yeah, couldn't yeah, work with yeah. them. Like, hey, you know, they're, I mean, you know, they're, they're not gonna hire you, man, if you're acting like that on set, you know. Of course. But I never had to get crazy with anybody, or or as far as as far as body of homies or girls that from the neighborhood, they were just like, nobody, nobody, nobody cared where nobody's from. They were just like. Do you want to do this? Let's do it. As long as you show up, commit. You're 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 um, you're nice to each other, you know. And um, and I would always encourage homeboys, hey, hey, like keep all the audio talk, you know, where you're from and old stories. Don't don't do that because if you guys start telling too many stories, you're gonna find out somebody shot somebody right. or somebody's family member. You know right. what I mean? Yeah, it's yeah. just not gonna end well. So to so I always always encourage them not to talk about, you know, if you knew somebody that you were busted with, talk about some old times in private. But don't do that on set. Plus, right. it was like we're trying to be professional. So, how are you going to talk about some crazy gang story? Because we all have them, right? right how are you going to be right. talking about that? And like, my producer guy or orange of ladies walking by <laughs> hears that, like, what the heck? Yeah, for sure. And there was one dude. There was one guy. He would always say, "Man, he would always talk about stories about women." And he was like, "Yeah, one time I had this high end in my band and this and that." And he oh, would say yeah, some great vulgar yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it was funny, but it was like, dude, you can't, you got to stop. And he would never stop doing it, and it was always getting back to me. And I had different eyes on set, you know. But sometimes it comes from production, 
And then I had different homies, but like, oh, the homie ratted on me. I'm like, oh, ratting fuck, on tell, yeah. telling the cops. That's not ratting. That, These fools yeah. are watching my back. Yeah, man. right. Of course. You know, if someone saw your job and you're watching your back, that's your homie. He's yeah. watching your back. Even to this day, like when I when I get new guys who are hired on, I get guys sometimes just fresh out of the fresh out of prison, and I gotta give them the speech, man. I'll tell them, listen, brother, the same prison, the same jail. When somebody comes and tells me, hey, this guy ain't working hard enough, he just doesn't want to carry your load for you. It's called work, man. It's, and some guys, unfortunately, they don't ever get that. So, yeah, I understand completely what you're talking about, brother. Yeah, and that's just like the whole thing of the mindset, you know. But I, like I said, I had I had a lot of good mentors, and, and and they helped me. So, like, certain areas in my life, right? So, like, I had a mentor, like, boom, that could help me with my, with my marriage. Another mentor for, you know, financial advice. Another mentor right. for mo my movie stuff, That's you know, right. or, or uh, stuff about fatherhood, you know what I mean? And I'll go to, like, I'm, I'm going to go get the fatherhood advice. I'm going to go to the dude that has the most experience That's right, as a father with the most kids and the longest time because <laughs> he's probably got the best stories and solutions and mistakes. Right, right, you know of course. I mean? Yes, yes, yes. And then, and then vice versa, I'm always committed to giving people advice on everything you know i was telling them, like i could help people so they think like oh okay put me in your movie no, i'm not how i help you i'll help you <laughs> to teach you the way how to go learn to study acting you know right of course but, um but um yeah so so a lot of things started happening another time we had like we'll do stunts right and we'll have like these guns they'll be real guns but they're shooting blanks correct and we're on this big movie called uh ollie g in the house with um, emilia rivera and sasha baron cohen yeah yeah and yeah. um and um, we're doing this big old stunt scene, and one of the actors, or one of the guys, he like walked off set. We're in the middle, like downtown LA, oh, Koreatown. He um he walked off set with the gun. Like as soon as they say cut, <sighs> we're supposed to put the gun down and take your finger off the trigger. That's right. like stunt rule, right? Yes. Like a safety rule, and then give them back to the to the, to the guy, the weapons guy. Right. Like they had one homeboy walked off set with the gun to go to go score some dope oh, in the area oh, shit. so i'm like you know we had to find them and remember back then when we started like there was no texting or nothing oh, you know right, I mean? a, lot right. of dudes, a lot of homies didn't have no there was no obama phones or nothing. <laughs> <laughs> we were just straight up like you know up ending the 90s so yeah, like, yeah brother you know so so i had to like keep constantly you know correcting people and teaching them and some were teachable and some weren't i mean that's what it came down to you know I mean, that, that, I'll that, give you an example. That particular guy ended up getting busted for murder down the line. Oh, wow. And he had a lot of potential, did some movies. I'm not going to say his name or nothing, but, right. you know, he, he did good. He was doing good. He was, like, he was funny. He was animated. I was like, man, this dude's, like, we all thought, like, this is going to go far. He just had wow. a great personality. Wow. But part of it had to do with his home life with his parents and stuff, you know, and right. he ended up doing something, and boom, he, he got busted, you know. So what were we going to ask him? No, uh, oh, I'm sorry. I was saying uh, at this time, uh, at this time that you're you're pretty much juggling a bunch of homies. I mean, you're you're not that old, right? Yeah. No, I mean I'm like in my early thirties now. So like from 28 on, that's all I'm doing, you know. So yeah, it's, it's yeah. It sounds like you got your hands full with these guys. So uh, how long were you doing that for until you actually started writing your own scripts and and doing your own movies? So I so I did the from so I did a. Um, for 10 years, I was a manager for 10 years, but again, it, 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 it slowly I did a lot of different things and wore a lot of hats. Like, again, I did, uh, I started off with like, oh, I'm just a guy that I could get the homies to be extras, and, right. and I then I could get cars, right? right and then I'm right. the guy I could get locations, or I knew people that had a wardrobe or a, a, a clothing line. Right. So I'm like, hey, let me get your clothing and, um, you know, like the dudes from uh, West Side Originals, I believe it's called. Right. They had bowed down clothes, like, you know, we'll oh, get them right. yeah, yeah, Joker yeah. back. Yeah, and then I got to meet, um, work with the Stevan and Cartoon, the guys from LA Original, and those guys really took me under the wing and like started showing me the game. You know? That's right. I was brother. real young when I met them, and those are a lot of the pictures that I post uh, from back then. They were just like down, you know. So we started doing all the photos, all the homies. So then it all, through all that, it started, and then I started an actual company called Suspect Entertainment, okay. which was a management company for homeboys. So now, so I went from getting them like extra roles to now I'm their their manager or I'm talking to casting directors and producers, getting them auditions That's for right. speaking roles. That's right. Right. So now I'm like reading contracts and all this stuff. Right? So <laughs> I was like, okay, well this is getting like serious. This is you know? real. So this is real. We, yeah. And then we get an office 
and again, thanks to our, our my other mentor. You know, it was a trip to my mentor. Tony Warren, we're friends to this day. Back then, he was our, my first mentor in the business, and he was a black dude. And the reason why I say that, because, you know, we come from the barrio, yeah. and we're, you know, that's the mindset, like, oh, stick to our own, right? Yes, yeah. And we got in here, and to be honest, it was pretty cutthroat in the beginning. There was no, I mean, there was no suspect entertainment. There was nobody else, like, helping homies out, right? Of course. Like, we had Danny Trejo and Emilio, but their careers already took off, you know what I mean? Yeah. And they're... They were like they don't have no time for that stuff. They had they were great examples of of helping people in recovery and and right. changing their lives around. But nobody had a company of helping homeboys, so right. I always thought, man, I'm gonna I'm gonna you know why I'll do it. Nobody did it, I'll do it. Like, right. I want to leave a bridge. But uh, so doing that, getting people acting roles, uh, you know, dealing with cash and then there's a, there's a thing called the breakdowns. So I would get the breakdowns. So then I had another guy come in, Mike Manzo. He was another homie. He, he, he came in and goes, hey, I worked for free. So I remembered how I was. and goes, I worked for free, man. He kept calling. I was like, all right, well, then take out the trash. <laughs> all right. And he did. He took out the trash, cleaned the office, this and that. So we had this little office. So back to Tony Warren, my first mentor. So he covered the fee for our office for wow. a few years. Wow. We couldn't even make the make the rent. Wow. And uh, man, we, we would have never um, did it if it wasn't for this guy. Because to think about it, these guys are not movie stars. They're getting paid what's called scale. So everybody thinks like, Oh, you're in Hollywood, you're rich or whatever. Like the only people rich in Hollywood are celebrities or you have actors that have been on series over like, I'll go and say about over three seasons maybe. So they got some dough, you know. Right. But everybody else, man, we, we, like you got to keep the hustle going, right? Right, right. So, so these actors are not making these big giant fees. They're getting what's called scale and the manager would get, usually managers get 10, 10 to 15%. I would only get 10% of gross. Okay. So if someone's making, you know, a thousand bucks and making a hundred bucks. Right. And then, so they're making a thousand bucks gross and they get $600 uh, net. Right. And then, and then they lose most of that for child support or something. <laughs> and then they still got to pay the company a right. hundred. They're like, Oh, homie, how come I can't pay off a net? Uh, why is it off of gross? And or or then they start like, oh, I'm not gonna pay. Like one homeboy told me like, oh, dog, I had to buy tires. Oh, I'm like, that's not my problem, dude. You know what I mean? So those things start happening. And I had a guy one time told me like, I'm not gonna pay you. What are you gonna do about it? I was like, hey, homie, I'm not gonna fight you over money. Take your money, take your check. I'm out. Lose like, my number. If you put your hands on me, then that's a different story. Because right. I already had made that commitment. Like I said back then that to not fight and not do something and get that ripped. You know, I wasn't trying course, to be like shit course, night, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, of course. You would have, you would have been out of business, man. Nobody would want to work with yeah, you. Yeah, yeah. I knew it. I was like, I, I seen Shig Knight was doing all the things that I knew not to do. <laughs> yes, dude. Yeah, I had a conversation with somebody about that Shig Knight a few days ago. That guy would have been a, a, a bil- not a billionaire. He would have been a, one of the biggest moguls of rap history if he would have played it the right way, brother. It's unfortunate. Yeah, I mean, you know, and you know, there was there was tension between certain homies at certain times and I'll give an example like this one guy again I had been working on this this thing of mine this little chip on my shoulder and and, and I had mentors that I would, that would walk me through it and and and, and one of the things like this one guy and he's, we're, we're good friends and things I'll say his name because you know we're good friends and, and okay. I've told the story before and his name's Frank Alvarez you know he he was a guy that um I met him on the set of the Fast and the Furious and he's there and um and we were still you know homies would be like we wouldn't want to like oh where are you from dog but like oh where'd you grow up at you know that's pretty much where you're from right, but it right, wasn't right. like we're challenging them it wasn't no, in no. a negative way like oh where'd you grow up at just conversation yeah, of course. and then he said oh, oh you still and like oh where are you still and then he's like oh right here and i'm like oh yeah and then i'm like oh we're about and then he finally said i'm i'm from here i was like oh that's cool man don't take this wrong but me and my homeboys jumped your home jumped the home one of your homeboys and he pulled out a gun out of his shoe back in the day. And then there was a long pause, and he goes, that was me. Oh, shit. I was like, oh, shit. And we started laughing because we just weren't on that page anymore. Right, and he right. became one of my closest friends. He would put it this way. He was one of my, to this day, we're, I was talking, had a long conversation with him yesterday. He's one of my closest friends. I mean, we got so close where I trusted this guy to pick up my son from school and take him to auditions. That's right, brother. That's and you already right. know when you trust somebody with yes. your kid, dog. Yes, like, yes, you better trust that's, the guy. That's, that you know not everybody you know what i mean so uh we became friends from there on and then you know we were always working well together we we're just laughing you know we just um and he was one that just 
uh, actor that kept growing up. He's the one in um, he's the lead guy in um, uh, East Los on 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 uh, YouTube. Okay. But um, yeah. So he's one of the guys that just kept. Also, oh, so with him, one time we were we would be having a conversation and, and a disagreement, and he would get very um, animated with his hands or get heated. Right. Right. And look, like you know, some women just get like no, nah, blah, 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 and they start moving and yeah, they, like they want to take off on you, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. So I was like, man, this dude gets a little heated every time we have a. So I was like, okay, I can't tell him now. He's too, 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 too. Um, you know, he's just too heated up. Right. So I waited. Um, I was like, oh, I know what I'm gonna do. And this goes back to tools that I was learning, right? Right. And and I said, um, um. Conflict resolution, right? So, I, so I, another day when we were going to do something, and I was just like, he was in the cool. I was like, hey, can I talk to you? He's like, yeah, what's up? And I said, hey, the other day, I go, sometimes when we talk, we disagree. I go, like, you just start getting all, like, like you want to take off on me. And, you know, dog, like, and this dude's, like, big, he's way bigger than me, right? right? I'm like, when someone feels like you're going to take off on you, you want to take off first. <laughs> right? <laughs> right. And I said, and the day we ever have to fight in the backyard or any of us, I go, this whole thing is going to fail. Yes, sir. You know what I mean? Because this is, we're not, we're not running a vario here. Yes, you know, we're all homies go to the backyard and throw down. And yes. we're not doing that. We're doing, we're doing business. That's right. And uh, he goes, ah, oh, man, oh, dog, sorry, man. He was like, man, it's a fool now. I'll never, I'll never. He goes, never, now we're good. He goes, and he said, goes, I, I'm tripping. He goes, let some, some of these fools try to hit up on my old lady. That's different. <laughs> <You're> <laughs> but, right. And and we be, and he never did it again, but I came at him right. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, for sure. Now, now that you're on the topic of the of the the movies, where did you come up with the concept? Because that that's a great movie, man. Those, those As soon as I saw him, I'm like, damn, this is, it's authentic. You know, before before I, I really knew who you were, Manny, that, that, that's what caught my attention in uh I mean, it's just some authentic stuff. Did you did you write those uh, screenplays or? or yeah, so so as, as all those star prompts start happening in the in the um, uh, suspect entertainment and the management, I started letting people go, and then it started fading away. And I got overwhelmed, I got tired of it, and I started like, okay, what? I, I got to that. I was like at a new transition, like what I really want to do in this business now, and I went back to writing. So I started going to school at UCLA Extensions to learn screenwriting. And to really just work on my grammar and my and all that stuff. So, and um, learn the structure and format of screenplay. Because um, I was like, every time I worked on somebody else's movie, I didn't like how it ended up. Right. And I don't have say. No, no time you're only gonna really have full say is via the writer director, right. for the most part. So, um, so I closed the management and just said, all right, to all the the ones that I was real cool with. Still, I was cool with all of them, but some that kept doing acting and some just faded out right i say look i'm gonna write something for you you know and then we'll, we'll, we'll reconnect or whatever so i started writing i wrote some bad scripts and i really got better at it and then it's like uh, i'm gonna film something and uh, we had this uh, friend of ours um my old writing partner um seth Dyser, he he was real f- good friends with um this producer from boys in the hood named okay. steve nicolaitis okay. And so we had pizza with him at his house. He read our script and he said, like, Hey, you know, if you guys want to do this, you got to write. He goes, you got to, you guys wrote a good script. You got to, you got to shoot something, you know, take 10 pages out, uh, raise 10 grand. And then he goes, you know, and, sh- and, sh- and, um, and we'll shoot something and I'll help you. And he gave us some money and I started reaching out to people. Within like a week of just calling people and emailing, we raised like nine grand. And um, and then some of the actors even put in money. You That's know what right. I mean? None of us got paid. We, that was all like for the crew, for the production, pay the location. We had to get permitted. We played right, it the right, right way. Right. Um, but it was all. It, but it was all like instincts. You know what I mean? Everything was. I had enough experience in the movie business to know. But now I was like doing it from like. So when I worked on somebody else's movie. I would just show up in the days of shooting, and then that's it. Right. This time we're doing everything in pre-production, which is all the planning, and then post-production, which is all the editing and sound and all that. So it was a little bit uh, more taunting, right? But um, but we got to control and do it the way we wanted, and we did that. I went that one actually a while ago, but um, and then we I called the guys. You know, hey, you, you, I got these. Like I didn't have them audition or anything. Right, right. Like, let's <laughs> do this. Let's do this thing, and like they were all down and. And then Richard Cabral was in there, and that dude ended up going and getting an Emmy nomination. That's right. Um, Cesar Garcia's uh, still working actor was in Breaking Bad, um, Fast and the Furious, and uh, so you know the guy still kept going. And then then that um, 
we're trying to shop that around and it'll still they'll still kind of rough and it was kind of rough because a lot of people did make bad cholo movies yes right? yes yes, or, yes. Or bad chicano movies yes, like yes. this i mean i don't want to sound negative but i mean there's just some that are made kind of corny and cheesy yeah, you're absolutely right and they're made by people that don't know any better or they're doing some stereotypical stuff they've seen in another movie yes, right yes 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 so i was like no I, so i i had a a good eye and a good sensibility i guess you could call i don't know, like me and a stem so we, <laughs> we see we have like a this corny radar like we could tell right away <laughs> yeah. uh, this instinct so like no nah, that's not no, 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 no. So, you know, there was, again, when I did it on other people's movies, the director, I would like, I'll say, you're the director, man, but that's, that's not, that's corny, you know what I mean? That's we right. say it like that. So I had a lot of practice. So doing it came natural and working with real homies who had act. these guys all trained and went to acting school for acting. Nice. So, you know, people think, and I used to think the same thing, like, oh, I, I lived the real life. I could write a script or I could play a gangster. Right, right. No, right. There's, a, there's a skill and there's a craft to it. All right. You know what I mean? Um, and so that training is very it, so this is what I explain about like, for all the people that want to be actors think about it like this like say say you're gonna like I'm sure you could throw down I could throw down right if somebody comes in our house and had to fight somebody right. or whatever right we're right. gonna do we're gonna our, every, we're gonna give everything we have to, to fight somebody to save our family absolutely so, so but if you put us in a ring with an MMA fighter who's trained we're gonna get knocked out yes sir right <laughs> yes sir it's just it's a fact it's yeah. just we're gonna get knocked out so that's the same thing with acting right or any sport you know actor needs to train you, you got people coming in from um, new york that train their whole life on the, the, the theater you know there's like the movie the third bad boys the new bad boys that's out yes there's a guy have, have you seen it by the way no not yet okay so when you see it there's a guy in there playing um kate del castillo's uh cartel son Okay. And I'm just like toe to toe with Will Smith physically. I mean, dude's bad. I'm like, man, that dude's bad. He's, you know, he's fit. He has a cool, handsome, like that movie star yeah, look. Yeah, yeah, of course. And he's just like toe to toe with Will Smith. I'm like, man, I never seen this dude before. And I'm right. looking him up after, and he's he's British. Ah. <laughs> and he's doing all these interviews, and he <laughs> has this mean British accent. Uh. So, and that's something I always tell because like they'll get a Brit or somebody from New York and put yeah. tattoos on them. Yeah, brother. You know what I mean? Yes, yes. Because it comes back to acting. So that dude trained and studied, and then he learned, you know, the Spanish and all that, and he threw down. So that's kind of the thing with acting. You know, like it just doesn't matter if you live. The, so in other words, if you live the life and you have all that pain and you studied. Now you're unstoppable, that's right. right? That's right. Because that's now right. you have a lot of pain to draw from, and that's really what screenwriting or, or all of this art is about: going and putting our pain into our art, and it's healing. So, like when I would write these scripts, man, it was painful, man. I had to open up so many wounds. Right. You're like I'm getting ready to write my book, and then I'm already like start crying and stuff, you know, gathering pictures and all that because it's just so painful. But right. writing these scripts, I had to, you know, I'm writing dialogue of my mom and stepdad, and they're all they're all gone. You know what I mean? Right. And um, so I would like grieve again for like two more weeks, probably longer. Right. And my wife would be like, "You okay? Cause I'll be in the restroom crying or whatever." Because I just opened up a wound that I that that it just comes out, yeah, you know. But yeah. that's like that's when I know I did good work, though, right? Because I just dug deep. And that's the same thing with the acting, you know. And I was only I was only able to to start doing my writing and doing all that because I was working on myself. You know, I was doing marriage counseling. I was going. Right. To, I started going to church. I started going to family counseling. I went to therapy, I went to anger management, you know, I was trying to better myself That's right. to better my family, yes, to better myself, to be better to my son. You know, I, I, I raised him, you know, cussing and yelling and saying, oh, right. do this, do that. You're not going to do drugs. You're not going to be, you know, wearing white t-shirts and all this stuff. But it was really out of fear that he was going to be like me. Yeah, of course. But he's, he's nothing like me. And I, I went about it the, the wrong way. So I'm constantly having to apologize to him and all that, you know. And, and make things right now and say, hey, son, I, I, I had it wrong, but um, I, I, my intention was right, you right, know? of course. And um, so, you know, I had to apologize to a lot of people out there, but, you know, doing all that helped me. And, and I even took, uh, I don't know if you're familiar with uh, Toastmasters, it's a public speaking um, workshops. So I started doing those, working on my public speaking and, and trying not to cuss. Uh, uh, you know, when I when I speak, especially like I, I, I was speaking at a middle school and there's all these parents are there, you know, <laughs> yeah. um, uh, trying not. And, and then, you know, I know that um, there's times where I slipped out and I could see the principal look at me like, whoa, <laughs> you know, but um, 
but I, when I when I'm doing creative work, like I'm I'm cussing because these characters cuss. And right, I have right. To, be raw but um yeah so i got into um back to the filmmaking so to put all that into my filmmaking just the script 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 it has to be a great script and then we bring it to life and then after uh east los um we had a big uh, hollywood producer involved uh and he was man we worked on that for like two years of just writing the team so we, we end up making it a t- uh, from a movie script to a television script to like a whole season, right? Right. So I had a guy that was a former HBO executive who worked on Sopranos, Boardwalk Empire, Entourage, like really big wow, shows. Yeah, and yeah. We're friends with him to this day. He worked with us for two years, man. Like just, and I was like, man, I got, I got two, and, 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 and nothing panned out for various reasons, but I got two years of working with this dude that worked on Sopranos, my favorite show, right? Yes, sir. The, it's like the top notch television of, yes, yes. like when people say, "Have you watched this?" I'm like. Don't, don't talk to me about anything until you watch Sopranos and Breaking Bad. <laughs> That's right. If you haven't seen those shows, yeah. Yeah, they're excellent. They're don't. excellent. Yeah. So, uh, so, so my level of, you know, I have this one guy say, well, you're not Scorsese and Tarantino. And I'm like, no, I'm Manny. That's right. Brother. But I could still have the standards of those guys, yes, right? Sir. Yes, sir. High standards of quality, high standards of quality on television. So that's my whole thing. It was like, if it ain't right, we got to do the take again. We got to get the right actor. You know, sometimes we have to let people go and all that. So it's really making things the right way, doing it. So then we got into a second chance. And now, before that, um, so I did East Lowe's. We couldn't get it off the ground. And I started working. Um, I was always uh, equally working. And to this day, you know, going to speak at juvenile halls, drug programs, uh, continuation schools. You know, and, and they would even offer money. I'm like, no, 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 I'm not. I'm good. You know, like, right. just get it done. You know, we're here for that. We wouldn't, uh, we t- took a couple pictures here and there because they wanted to, but we didn't really put that out there. It was just, we wanted to show up and be very, um, um, what do you call it, um, comfortable and uh, personal. You know right. what I'm saying? Get real personal with the people and not, not you know, once you start filming all that, you know, sometimes they ask me to speak today, like I tell me no Instagram live or none of that. <laughs> Yeah. Like, I want to keep it real. I'm not trying to do it for an audience. I'm doing it for you guys, That's you know? right, brother. That's right. And um, so I saw one of my old friends, he ran a nonprofit. He, he got opportunity, came up. He's like, hey, you want to you wanna work with me? So I worked with him for uh, two, three years uh, as a teaching artist for his, for his nonprofit called SoCal Crossroads and Tribeca Teaches, which was Robert De Niro's nonprofit. That's right. Got to take some kids to New York. Got to meet Robert De Niro. That was cool, and that's where um, I, I this one kid, man. I just, man, you know, I, I'm still um, in contact with all these. This is like they're in seventh grade back then. Now they're all in like college and wow, you okay. know they work, and so I'm still in contact to this day with them. And um, but this one kid, uh, particularly one, um, we just I don't know, man. I just saw like a young me. You know what I mean? Yes, yes. And we just connected, and um, and we would just stay friends. And then my friend saw I got him. I was a teaching artist, and I was like, hey, this right, I, I have this little idea for a short when my friend died, and I was always calling on me. And again, luckily, I had already kind of like went to therapy and all that. So I wrote the script, and my friend Saul was down there. He was a, a cinematographer, which handles all the camera department. And then I told the kid, I want to go, you want to be in this thing? He said, yeah, and he was really new to it. A lot of people come and say, like, all oh, the acting's not good. And he was, he, you know, he wasn't a real seasoned actor. He's, he was new. Right. And I was proud of him, man. He came from almost getting suspended. The the the, the council was like, hey, he's gonna get suspended for selling weed. You want him or? And I'm like, yeah, I want him even more now. That's right. <laughs> you know. And um, so then we made the movie, man. And then you know, we uh, we try to put it in film festivals. Uh, so at the same t- same time, we we shot the short film, A Second Chance. We're, so now we're doing like a whole year of trying to put it in film festivals, and I write and I wrote the script, the feature film version, right? Right. And I wrote that in like seven days, and then I re- rewrote it all year long as I'm trying to put the film in film festivals. So you're spending like twenty bucks here, forty bucks here, and I just kept getting rejected, rejected, rejected. You know, right. and I was like, man, like you know, I was like, oh well, you know, it is what it is. The first one's kind of like a bummer, but then after a while, I was like. You know, rejection ain't nothing to me. <laughs> my whole life been rejected. Right, you know? right, right. So let's keep it moving. And then I said, like, screw it. I'm going to put it on YouTube. So my son was putting me, he's like, yeah, just put it on YouTube and all that. I didn't know anything about views, anything. I was still old school. Like, I want to be in the theater one day, you know? Right, right. 
Um, little Rob's a friend of ours. I put him in some movies. I was his acting manager for a while, and um, he let us use a song. And then um, he said, I say, man, you promote it on your Instagram. And I was on no social media. I was just one of those. I mean, to this day, all I listen to is old school music, anything from the 90s right, on. Right. Um, I respect all new artists, um, but that's not who I have on my playlist. You know? Right, right. It's just, I'm just really one of those guys. But, again, I respect, like, I'm not into sports, never been into sports, have no interest in it at all, but I respect athletes. Yeah, of course. You know what I mean? I could watch a good athlete uh, documentary. I respect Kobe and, and all these guys, you know, right. what they do. Um, so, um, yeah, so we did the movie, shot it, or, or they didn't, they rejected it, so I'm like, ask you, I'm going to put it up on YouTube. So before I got on YouTube, I did all kinds of research. Right. How does my page want to look? You know, what is this? What is that? I still didn't really understand the view thing. Right. So I just put it out there, started reading all the comments and all that. You know, I mean, you know, you know when you started, right? Oh, yeah, but absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> and like, there's some, there's some comments you want to reply to, yeah. right? Oh, man. <laughs> it burns you up a little okay, bit when you first start. I didn't understand what the, what the film was. But it was made for youngsters. It was made for PG-13 yeah, yeah, folks, yeah. you know? And then it started getting, it got close to a million views. And I said, they all have to big deal. You know, That's like, huge. And, he's like, in like three months, I'm like, oh, sweet. And I was like, all right. And then it got to two million, you know? Yes, then, yes. Um, and then we're trying to get the uh, trying to get producers involved to make the movie. I got the script ready. I worked on the script with my uh, a sc- uh, um, with my coach as a writer. Right. The same. I called my old um, my old UCLA teacher. I stayed friends with her, and she's like, "Yeah, do it." And I and I stayed friends with all my a uh, lot of producers and friends, mentors in the business that were always just like cheering on me, saying, "Yeah, keep going, do this." I would call them for advice. You know, in the beginning, you kind of want to call these. these these established people like hey help me make my thing right and a lot of them and that's a turn off because everybody's asking them and they've got right. their own thing yeah, going on of course and what i learned is like man having them as friends and mentors is even better because you have that lifeline right, right. forever yeah. so that's what i try to be to people like hey look i'm not gonna read your script or make your movie but i'm gonna show you how to do it it's like it's like that saying said i won't i won't give you like i think the bible says something about i'll show you how to fish i'm not gonna give you the fish or something so that's pretty much what you're doing Exactly, exactly, and I'm man, and I'm so glad that they did that for me because I just learned so much more. And I mean, again, and not only for myself, I learned so much more from personally doing it, and then now I could share it. I don't have to say like, "Well, this guy said do it like this." I was like, "No, this is what I learned." And so, like when I do mentoring, still to this day, I'll say, "Here, there's the things that I know, and here's the things that I think right. that are, are my opinion." Right. You know, like you know, I know you have to take acting classes for sure. And here's some here's some options that you could try that w- would work for you that work for other people. You know, I would never shove um, a certain photographer or an acting coach down somebody's throat. I would just say like these these the ones that the guys really love. This one worked for them. You know, sometimes for actors you don't want to be at the same acting coach where all the homies are at because it's a distraction. Because right. then now yes. you're there, you know, um, socializing. Correct. Right. Correct. Like Correct. for me, I'll be distracted. But if you're able to go with all your all the homies. And turn your phone off and focus, then cool. But for me, I can't do that. I need to be at a place where there's nobody there I know. Right. <laughs> Maybe right. one person, you know, talk at break or whatever. Now, with the with the movie, have you uh, are you guys gonna make it into a, like a short film? Is it what what is it difficult to get it? Why are people not buying it if they're not? What's the? Uh, yeah. So the process of trying to get some producers involved was well. Here's the thing: it was like one is like they got their own slate of movies. So it's like even if say. Brad Pitt's company, he has a company called Plan B. Okay. He made Moonlight, a lot of great movies. Like, even if those guys did sign on, they have a, if you go on IMDb, you could look and they have a slate of movies. I'll be in line, right? Right. By the time they, it's going to take another five, ten years. Like, I don't wow. have that. Wow. And then the, the, the guy, this guy, Rick Roman Wall, he did a movie called, he directed a movie, wrote and directed a movie called Fallon and uh, Shot Callers. Yeah, yeah. And, He's, he's a real cool dude, man. Like, we, him and I became real good friends, and he's like, nah, you, every, you know, everybody came back to you, just gotta make it yourself, make it low budget. So that's what the, the okay, I gotta just think, do this thing myself. So I'm trying to raise money here and there a little privately, but then uh, we were getting the package together, and then the, the lockdown happened. So right. I'm like, okay, let me try to figure out how we're gonna do We were just gonna do a straight up low budget where <laughs> some of us are not even gonna take a fee and just shoot it on the weekends, you know? Right. Because at the end of the day, it really is if the amount of the movie's good. And and one of the things I asked um, the producer of Boys in the Hood, Steve Nicolaitis, 
when he was mentoring us, I said, hey, man, listen, you know, when I write these movies and make these movies, like, to me, like, I want to make it for the Chicano people. Like, that right. that matters to me that they like it. You know, I don't care if the people from candidates or somewhere all over the world don't get it. Man, is, that how, is that wrong thinking? He goes, no, you're absolutely right. When John Singleton made Boys in the Hood, he made it for South Central. That's right. Everybody else adapted. I'm like, Psh, that's all I needed to that's hear. Right. And that was pretty much the last advice I really needed to really feel very confident to like just, and, and, you know, every time something didn't pan out, it was because I went with somebody else's instincts, not my own. Right. You know, to be honest, and I'm like, I should have went with my own instincts. So now I, you know, and I don't always get it right, I get it wrong, but at least it's like, eh, it's on me. You know what I mean? So let me ask you this How can regular people like me? And other people that are listening that want to support, you know, your movie making uh, career and all that stuff. Uh, how can we help as regular people? Uh, watching, sharing, um, like how you invited me on the show. Eventually, we're going to do a, um, you know, I don't know if we're going to do a Kickstarter, but I might do something on a website. I might do something where we raise some money privately and then put the movie, you know, especially t- in times like the way it is right now. Right. I'm thinking about um, releasing the feature. The script is done. It, the script is tied. I have all the main cast in place. I have a producer in place. I have my cinematography in place. Esteban Orios is on as one of the producers. Nice. If you guys haven't seen LA Originals, wow. make sure you guys watch that. That's great. Um, and, um, you know, and he and I got some documentaries, other stuff that we already shot that's in post-production. But as far as the movie... Uh, what I think I want to do is uh, release it online for like five ninety nine or yeah, whatever, six ninety nine, where people can watch it at home or on their phones. Absolutely, privately. So um, right now, I think just hit me up on Instagram um, and stay tuned until we kind of sort that out. But like the whole lockdown, you know, happened, and it, we just kind of got to rethink things right now. But. Um, yeah, so, you know, like I said, I might do the GoFundMe or I might do the, a private thing where people could donate, you know. Yeah, I, I think... I, I haven't set up the thing that the thing you told me about. Yeah, but I, I told you about doing the membership on YouTube. And, and if anybody needs that kind of thing, it's it's your kind of uh, your kind of content because you're, you're actually making movies for the Raza, man. And, and, it's, and your movies are not just entertaining. They have a message behind it. That's one thing I really enjoy. Yeah, thank you, man. Like, I really try to make it authentic. I don't want to be preachy or corny or, or, or you know, um, I know when I was um, young and gangbanging and people started wanting to talk about, um, um, you know, religious stuff or whatever, I just didn't want to hear it, you know right, what I mean? To right, me, like, it's right. just like living a clean life as example. And um, whatever religion anybody is, that's cool. You know, whatever works for them is it's great, you know. I know it works for me. Um, but it's making the movie, you know, I, I got to sometimes take off these other hats and then get into uh, um, my filmmaking hat and also my young gang banging mindset. Right. Like, if I was a young banger, right? What I want to watch this, right? right. How is this yes. going to move me or whatever? Yes. And the main thing to me is like being authentic, being real, keeping keeping it as raw as possible and just not doing anything else, not doing anything that anybody else already did or tried to do. Right. You know what I mean? And it's like, I was always, and I was kind of nervous to put stuff on YouTube because like, oh, someone's going to take my idea. And my, my friend, Michael <laughs> Garcia, the one I told you worked at HBO, yes. he said, he goes, no, 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 you, you have your own taste and style already. Yes. You know what I mean? You don't yes. ever have to worry about that. Yes. So, um, yeah, I mean, we're just going to shoot the movie, um, hopefully this year, uh, really low budget but again low budget is not low quality right that's no. the difference because some people low budget is fine there's low budget movies but low quality you know bad sound or bad camera or, or actors that don't know what they're doing you know that's that's where goals into making it cheesy like well that's all i had well then keep practicing yeah i, I, don't, I don't i don't i don't you know? think your movies are 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 even the phrase low budget is in there it's just you're independent man that's pretty much what it is man. yeah independent yeah exactly yeah you're independent now. Let me ask you a question. You now you've been in the industry for <laughs> shit. We're in 2020 already, brother. So you've been in the industry for over 20 years. Are you seeing the support for Rasa made films like uh, like the one that uh, Esteban and Cartoon did uh, that documentary? Are you seeing more support from Rasa than you would five, ten years ago? Uh, I think so. I think. Well, I mean, as far as filmmaking, here's what, here's what it is. Because I, 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 there's these guys. Um, Alex and David, they have a film, a short film called Slipping in the Darkness. It's on HBO right now, a short film, and it's really good. You guys should watch it. Those guys, you know, they have a thing with HBO, and they're asking, I had a meeting with them, and, and, 
you know, they said, we want all brown writers in the writer's room. Right. And my opinion was this, is that it really comes down to sometimes having other Latinos or the, I, I like for me, I don't really worry about if other Latinos are supporting it because sometimes it is what it is. They might not get it or like, oh, you guys are making our people look bad playing cholos and all that stuff, right? It's right. really about who gets our material. Like I have one of my friends and mentors, this guy was a Brit, William Green. You know, he bought me my first laptop, you know what I mean? And right. really believed in me. He was a Brit and his dad was a, a train robber in London. Oh, <laughs> so wow. he knew all that stuff, you know? Right. So he got me. So it's really about people that really get what you're trying to say and do it. Sometimes it's uh, Latinos and sometimes it's not. Right. You know what I mean? Sometimes it's, uh, you know, my other friend, my other good friend is Seth Eisen. He's a Jewish guy. You know, like I said, Tony Warren, the black guy. You know, certain, certain people are uh, get your stuff and what you're trying to say. And, and the, the producer boys in it was a white dude. Right. And then all the homies that, that are behind me, they get it. So, but as far as it be, when I started, it was cutthroat. It's not as cutthroat um, anymore. It's way, way better. To answer your question, I was kind of a long version. But <laughs> no. it's way, way better today. But there's... You know, but a lot of people, a lot of people still complain. And I say, don't complain. If you're writing these big articles or you're writing these rants or you're going on Instagram ranting that there's no opportunity, no. You're waste, that time you took to write this article, you could have wrote a script. That's right. You know what I mean? You could have wrote your own story. Like, don't wait for people to write your story. Write it yourself. We need more Chicano writers, screenwriters, and we don't have that. Right. And that's... I was like, shoot, I'll do it. I mean, you know, we got we got Emilio, Danny Trejo, Cartoon, Esteban. They all are masters at their craft. Yes. Like, oh, shoot, I'm, I, I, I've been mastering my craft at screenwriting, so I'm ready to go. You know what I mean? But, you know, we, we need some creative freedom at the same time. So, yeah, the opportunity, like, I have opportunities. I've been at HBO, I've been at Sony, I've been to all these studios. And in the beginning, it was like, oh, well, we need a writer. Well, we need a director. You know, now it's like getting some heat, but it's like, okay, you got the three million views or whatever. Okay, well, yeah, but, you know, don't don't shove another actor on it because he brings in so much money. Like, they lump um, lot, uh, Mexicans from Mexico when with Chicanos, right? Right. And they try to put us all, no, like, it doesn't work. You can't have a, a, a Mexican guy that could, that just fit that straight out from Mexico. I mean, certain actors can pull it off, right. but not a lot. Right. Playing a Chicano, you know, if you put Emilio in a Chicano role, boom, he, he, he kills it, right? Yeah, yeah, of course. Um, so, so this, you know, certain things like that got to be, you know, or, or this guy came from this TV show, let's put him on this thing, but he's like, nah, but he sounds like he's from New York. Right, right. You know I mean, so that's the thing. So it's like you go with the big money, the big studios, or you go with, doing it less money but more creative control so that's the point where Stephen and, and I are at is like we're going to go to whoever gives us the most creative control that's right so I have three scripts ready to go he slows the screen the TV series to do it authentic it's going to take place all 90s nice you know and he slows is just a working title and then I have uh, Hollywood's Most Wanted it is a rise and fall half hour comedy that's of right. suspect entertainment, all the stories I just told you That's about. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're getting stressed out, juggling all the different homies' careers. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you can make a sitcom out of that one. <laughs> yeah, it's already written. It's, and people love it, dude. I studied and studied and, and rewrote it, and I mean, it's ready to go. Uh, people love it, but I'm not going to, you know, they're not for sale. I'm not selling my scripts, you know what I mean? That's right. That's like, right. If you want to, you know, I had, I had got offers to buy my life rights and all that before, right. and I'm, but they wanted to, like, give me some money to go away. I'm like, right. nah, I'm good. You know? Right, right. So I come with it and let's make it right. If not, we're just going to, you know, like, if I have to, man, I'll do web series five minutes, five minutes at yeah, a time. For you sure, know? brother, for sure. But uh, at least it's going to be done. Like if I die tomorrow, bro, like I'm happy with what's on YouTube. I'm totally fine with that because we got to do it our way and it's only going to get better and better. And I say better as because, you know, I listen. A director's job is not to just go and direct and be like, I know everything. No, a director's job is like a father in your house. You have to listen from your family. You have to listen to your wife and to that's your right. kids. What do you want? What's best for them? What's best for the family? And that's the same thing with the project, right? Like the, the more I became a better husband, the, uh, a, a better dad, then I became a better director. Right. And a, a good director listens to his whole team right and yes. th there's no ego the, the baby in the family is the film what's yes. best for the film yes. so that means i could get advice from anybody on the film set through any uh, process of pre-production development anything 
Yeah, they, they could be one line in a movie, like, oh, that's a good line, let's put it in the script, and if somebody else gave it to me, that's, that's um, doing craft service, or the guy that's doing, you know, a, a PA that's doing, um, like, I, I talked to a guy who's a PA, and I've been mentoring him on his stuff, and, right. and he, he just did 16 years, and he's totally, and he, he, he DM'd me on Instagram, very, very top-notch professional, and I gave him my number right away, and we talked, and we hit it off, that's right. and he, um, he gave me some. He gave me um, a couple of lines. He read my script because I wanted him to learn the format. So when he writes his script, right? And he read it the next day, and he gave me he gave me some suggestions. I'm like, dude, I'm gonna use it. I like it. That's right. And what he gave me was gold because that came from experience that he had more experience in because yes, yes. of being 16 years or whatever, That's right? A long time, yes. And so I have to be so as a direct, you have to be open for all that stuff. So I'm open, you know, more open and. It's not about me. It's about the project. So yeah. So when you know either the right money comes, or, or I would say this: not only the right money, the money with uh, where they're gonna say, "Hey, do you guys think I'm gonna leave you alone?" Absolutely, brother. That freedom. <laughs> you know what I mean? that freedom. So most likely that'll be private because a lot of studios they want to be all up in the business. Right. Of course. They they want you they know, want they want to buy your soul pretty much. Yeah, and I and I'm not for sale. You know, I I want to leave. Uh, I want to like Leonardo DiCaprio said, the way you tell of a, of a it's a good movie by the test of time. Yes, absolutely. The way we, the way we still love the outsiders, right? Yes, sir. That yes, thing sir. still holds up. Yes, sir. That's how this movie, a Second Chance. Also, uh, we made it for the sh- the title is for the short film. That's not going to be the title for the feature. It's all untitled. I, I don't put out the titles for the features because then people start using them. Right. Right. Of course. But um, so yeah, those are just all working titles. But um, yeah, so the the one hour drama East Los is ready to go. Half hour comedy Hollywood's Most Wanted, and then the uh, Second Chance, you know, the feature. And uh, then we want to hire people in front of the camera, behind the camera, and give them opportunity at the same time. That's right, brother. That's right. So so Manny, do you and your wife ever uh, sit there at the dinner table and kind of look back and laugh and see where your life has has become to from driving around sets and trying to crash uh trying to crash sets and get into the movie industry oh yeah always man we just uh we always laugh about that you know and, and she laughs she makes funny right now because a lot of people call me og she's like oh <laughs> gee <laughs> yeah, she's like brother. oh it's a text she's like hey oh gee dinner's ready <laughs> yeah brother. yeah you know but um no man i mean you know i get emotional sometimes but think back yeah, you know, I mean, look, yeah. I, I, I mean, you know, we still, we still got bills to pay, ain't it? We living in the mansion, yeah. that, but like, you know, we feel, we feel very blessed that the, like, I get some, man, I get some really, really, and I hardly get any negative, uh, man, I get like very, very tiny negative um, DMs or comments, very, right. very rare. Right. But I get like, man, really, really cool comments. I mean. Some guy just like, hey, oh, you don't remember me, but I was on the set of SWAT, SWAT the movie, right? Right. Like years ago, and he's like, and I was just sitting alone, and you came up to me and, and told me to come and hang out with the guys, and you gave me a bunch of inspiration about to keep going and all that. And this guy's like a working actor, and I'm nice, like, bro, I don't brother. remember you, but nice. shit, you man, right on, brother. Right. That's right, brother. Like, that like that that that's better than money dude you know what i mean like yes yes you know, being able to touch somebody's life you know that that's just it's the it's the greatest feeling and i think that's like the to me what i learned is like kind of the key to life man when you get into a place where it's not about you and it's about just serving humanity because no matter what man we're all just passing through you know what i mean yes, sir. We're, 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 you know all yes, the stuff that we have is cool but we ain't taking it with us and like just leaving leaving an impact on somebody's life man oh my god dude that's like the greatest thing man and i'm so proud of that and she always tells me like oh i'm so proud of you look at you that's know, right help brother. a lot of people or whatever that's right. and i was like man i feel blessed and humbled and and and, and, and people are like oh thank you and i'm like hey look dude don't thank me just just help the next man out just, that's right I always tell people that's right homie. like i'll literally be on a phone call for an hour and a half in the garage and my wife's like who's that like oh like this this guy I'm mentoring, you know, sometimes they're young, sometimes they're old, you know. Right. And sometimes I'll get a guy, I'll say, he's like, hey, homie, woo, 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 and, you know, I say, oh, you got to get an acting class as a thing. He goes, oh, I'm a real G fool, and I'm like, okay, <laughs> have a good one. <laughs> like, I'm not going to give that guy my number. <laughs> right, right, right. But, you know, so, um, but no, I, I, no we, we laugh about it. She, she, um, yeah, do we laugh about it? We cry about it. That's right, um, brother. That's right. Um, everything, man. You know, and it's like I had, I had, um, um, 
uh, what is that? A survival, for survival survival's guilt. Uh, revert, remorse. Yes. Survivor's remorse for many years, you right. know, like, but it's like, man, I had to, um, you know, I was a lot of unforgiveness towards people and unforgiveness towards myself, right. you know, and I made peace with all that. I forgive everybody, and even in my heart. If I if I see them, I tell them. Right. But in my heart, and then I forgave myself for a lot of things because I was a young me. That's not me today. Correct. And I put the old me to rest, man. That's really what it is. I put the old me to rest. Took a few things that I loved about my old self and use it now and uh, my whole mission is just like what you're doing man just commit 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 to helping others spreading the good life living a clean life right brother. and um you know just trying to inspire you know what i mean and sometimes i i get worried about a post i'm gonna do like man, i hope it doesn't come off like i'm bragging and <laughs> yeah, that's, yeah. i never want to come off like that no, you know? you're not you're not so so you know you know what manny you you like uh, I had this other gentleman on here not too long ago. Same thing I I, I told him. I'll tell you, but I, I commend you and your wife, man. You're another example of how we're breaking the cycle. You know, one family at a time, brother. And then you're going out there and extending what you know and your knowledge, and you're helping these other people. And your wife is right there along the ride with you because I think a lot of people understand how important our wives are in this uh, struggle, fight, or movement that we're doing to try to help other homies out or just people in general, brother. And uh, I just want to thank you for coming on the platform. Thank you for sharing your story. And uh, to let the listeners know, please let them know where they can find you on social media, brother. Oh, thank you. You know, and I want to say one thing about the wife thing. The more the more I committed to doing this, is the more my wife stood by me and knew, like, okay, he's serious. That's right. So if you're telling your wife, hey, babe, I'm going to go do movies or I'm going to do that, but you're not really that serious and you're partying or doing things you shouldn't be doing, then she's not going to take you serious. Yes, sir. So you got to... You know, so yeah, the more I come in, she had my back. But um, um, no, at Manny Jimenez Senior, M A N N Y J I M E N E Z S R, uh, is my, you know, my handle for Instagram and YouTube, Manny Jimenez Senior, and um, I try to, and I do my best to really answer all the DMs. So you got questions or whatever about the business, about I mean, I pretty much told everybody here what you got to do, right? Yeah, Steady. Pretty much, brother. You, you love the blueprint. Tell me, you know, uh, you know, I was in prison and I was a gangster. Like, no, you got to study acting if you really want to do this. And like, you can make a good living doing this. So study pays off, you know. You you can make a good living and change your life for the better, brother. Yeah. So hey, man, thank you for having me. Keep doing what you're doing. I told you that 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 last uh, post you did about the uh elote lady right i was really feeling it and i was like yeah man you know we've been doing we've been hurting our own yes, ourselves have. for a long time and um there just was no cameras back then you know exactly brother exactly and now you know it's unfortunate that that it's on camera um but um it's a new time you know i think that we will conquer we can always conquer with love and compassion and empathy